Hey guys, I just wanted to communicate why I'm using DistroKid. And this is for every distribution company that distributes music or that works with independent artists. I'm a 100% independent artist from start to finish. I will not be signing a record deal, and you will see why. I'm going to explain why. This is for any new artist that doesn't like going off the words of a stranger. I'm an independent artist. I don't need DistroKid. I could have just bought a website. I could have made a product, any product, a t-shirt, a CD, a, like a, a, a song, an album, EP, long play, whatever, album. And I could have sold a t-shirt on a website, and that would have been a store. And you could have bought it directly from me, and I could have just sent the CD. I would have just made it. Right? We got a loan or something from some bank or something. But I would have like maybe had the ability to you know, sell, initially sell about 25,000 units of something to make a profit, then look at a massive merger with a bigger company that helps me become successful as an entrepreneur. Think of the big company like Jason Capital. They're just going to tell you what not to do and what to do. Very sheep-like, it makes sense. I'm going to keep it like that because if you weren't in this reality called entrepreneurship, you weren't a franchise like Papa John's, it wouldn't make sense. It, like the things I said would be irrelevant to you. So back to what I was just saying. So the benefits of DistroKid and the difference between why I didn't use United Masters. United Masters was correct. It should be absolutely free initially. And if you could see it from my perspective and Gerald's perspective, we made all of this content without a record label. We made all of this stuff because of a school reality. We went to a really good school or because your dad owned a studio or you had a studio. And most people that have money own a studio and they own the recording software and they can make a podcast. They can make an album. They can sell beats online. Let's say they own a whole bunch of, um, uh, let's just say they have a whole bunch of money. They don't need, like they can get a job, they, you know, let's say their school has, they don't need a record label. So we don't need DistroKid United Masters if you're independent. Now, because I have real customers, there are services that you can use called a record label service and TuneCore. I'm going to use a, a, what initially was, was, was spoken from a couple of examples like Gerald Earl Gillum, Russ. I'm coming up. I'm using District Kid. You'll see why I'm using District Kid. When you have customers, you should use Dish. I meant my bad. When you have customers, you should use TuneCore. Even if you don't want to use TuneCore, you should use TuneCore. Why? All you're simply doing from the visual, if you could break this down, is they're going to basically or you're paying a fee for them to just pay for your music in iTunes. That's the relationship between TuneCore and an artist. It's like they should be like, oh, whoa, this is your stuff. Like, yeah, it is. So all you're doing is you are paying for somebody else to pay for your content. That's it. It's like saying, um, that's all it is. It's the only reason why it exists. I thought TuneCore and DistroKid, this was some mega colossal, you know, they just give you a whole bunch of, you know, that, that's, that's, what it's, that's what they're trying to do from their perspective. Like, we'd actually like to word of mouth verify you from behind the scenes. Like, I know United Masters did that. I'm looking for more, like, this is when I'm going to, like, explain my proposition with people. You should go to DistroKid and say, why... Why is this like this? You should go to DistroKid and be like, why can't I buy the CD and get it that day? DistroKid, why can't I buy his stuff inside of the store? You're accurate when you say that. Because when I'm putting out stuff, I can just send you the link. I can just send you the file on your... For, it'll be like 
If you want it to support, you can buy it. But if you wanted it from me, I can send you the high quality file, whatever file you want, send it to you on email. I don't need a distribution. I can just email it to you. I can email, I could DM it to you, I could put it on SoundCloud and send you the link of it. If you really wanted something from me professionally, I can just send it to you. I can come over to your house, I can give you the disc. I can give you a sand disc, I can give you an SD card. I, can, I could just, you know, um, NFC or whatever, you know, transfer, or whatever. So that's my reality. So here's business models that work. Mine, they're trying to do this with United, Ma they're trying to, f my, my problem is what United Masters solved initially, but they did not solve the, if they just don't like this company because of the people behind the scenes, it affects it. So long story short, you have three different realities that I believe are completely different for an independent artist. If I'm on TuneCorp, it's because I'm selling an album. You can go to a record label and make a lot of money. Or if you have a fan base, you know what your fans like, you just go on TuneCorp. Does that make sense? It's like, they'll tell you what to make, that'll make money, whatever you could have made. You could have just said, ah, you know what, instead of dropping this with a record label, I'd like to drop this on TuneCore. Now, what do you do on TuneCore? Well, first you have to prepare yourself for kind of like a depression, meaning it just spreads everywhere and you have to kind of like be nice dressed, all this stuff, you know. But let's say your first album, it's called Love. Okay, so your first album, your 20 song album you dropped on TuneCore, you get the link for iTunes, that's all that is. It's just a link to iTunes. Every single day, you'll post the link on your Twitter and you'll post the link on your Facebook or your social media account and it just spreads that some guy dropped music online. They'll talk about it. You'll get some streams from it and then your family will start to push out that they want you to buy this because it's really good. Then you have realities like United Masters, which solve, I would say, like people who like aren't like me and Gerald or Russ, who don't have massive visions of being this mega colossal business online. They're going to just help you verify that you're a musician. They're gonna like verify that you are, probably get you on Google and all this stuff, and then it's up to you to do the work from that point in time, which means do the right thing. Then you have my reality, which is what I initially wanted. I just want to push a button, which is going to make you guys laugh. I, can, I, could, upload on, I could upload an album on TuneCore. It comes out. Every, I, every six months an album comes out, they got the link. It uploads. You can see it uploads. They get it. Boom. You get the CD, order it. Boom. But I'm like, you know what? I just want to push a button. I don't want to have to like wait for everything I do. I just want to push a button. So when you go on DistroKid, if I want to move my page, I want to move it myself. I want to be more hands-on. If I want to upload something and take it down, I want to take it down and I want to see it taken down. Or when I upload something, I want to see it uploaded. I want to see what stores it goes in. I want to have control over what stores it goes in. Let's say, and they'll say this too, like this is where uh, Gerald says he is a, a genius. He may, Isaiah made money because of this. Just because, let, let's, let's say this, let's say you're working at Amazon and my, my friend didn't get a job. Oops, right? That's a stain, right? But most likely they're doing the right thing. Every single story doesn't necessarily do the right thing, I guess, from start to finish. So it's like, there's a reality where like, I'm gonna say something that's controversial, they'll fix it, but like, they'll be, go to, I'm gonna say it, and they'll, they'll probably be like, you know, you're right, Isaiah, you know, like in real time. It's like saying if you didn't necessarily agree with Title's vision, so you just don't wanna have Title's vision, or your music in Title. What do you mean? You just don't agree with it. What do you mean? It could be something like you believe that something should have just been free. So you just don't want to have it in there, right? And I actually say this as something against like Jay-Z or anything, but I just don't agree with some stuff, you know, some stuff. But it is what it is. 
And that's a nice way of saying I just, I just don't agree with it. You know, I just, I just don't, you know. But I know everyone's going through their problems. Oh, uh, let me see, 10 minutes? Yeah, so when it comes to like taking stuff out and all this stuff, you know what I mean? I want to be hands on with that stuff if I have to. That's why I like DistroKid. Other places, it might take like two years for your stuff to be edited or something. This will eventually be immediate. This will just be like, let's say this, some, it didn't happen with Title because they hold him to verified stuff. Let's say someone started a store and they were like really, really messed up in the media, but most likely it wouldn't be, but let's say they just messed up. Oh, crap. You know, you could like pull out your thing from the store until they fix it and then you could just re-upload it to the store. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So like if there's like some funky stuff in the store, let's say it's narration problems, like I could just like pull this off of there and then I would just say, it's already in Amazon, just go to Amazon. It's already in Pand or Pandora, it's already in Pandora, Pandora. Or if you wanted to come to me, I'll just send it to you. But if there's funky stuff in the store, I wanna be hands on, if that makes sense. So it's just like the way I see DistroKid, you could make an edit, you could take something down, re-upload it, that was your decision. You could change the title of something, that was your decision, like the font of something. You could vault something, and it's safe, and it's still copyrighted, which means you could just upload something. Like you could upload all your music, and it's still vaulted. It can't, there can't be another metadata uploaded via this, this thing. So there's a whole bunch of cool things. And um, what else? Uh, do, do, you can obviously get on billboard. You obviously have your stats. But it's just like the hands-on stuff. Like I just want to be able to upload it, edit it, and then if I need to change something, change it on my own. I don't want to wait like 50 years or clearances. I just, it's just like if I just wouldn't, if this, if District Kid was like a Taco Bell, I don't have to deal with the person behind. I know what, I know what I'm doing. Like I have a school and every, I know what I'm doing. Right, I'm, I just want to go in there, put my order in or order it, because if people are ordering it, it's like this. They could order something, if District Kid was like Taco Bell, they could order something to go, it goes to their house. They don't need to have a conversation about licensing. They don't need a conversation about whether or not you have a PhD. I don't want all those conversations. I just want people to be able to order it from district, because of District Kid or because of a store, it comes to their house. I want to be able to like, go into this application, not say anything every single time, like a, in a McDonald's, go to the kiosk, put my card in, doesn't matter what card, the card goes in, it comes out, I don't even have to look at them, I get it, walk out, I have a great life. That's what DistroKid is with me. So that's explaining why, you, why I'm using DistroKid and why it's working for me. Thank you guys, peace out you boy.